Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to Jonathan Haggerty, the double champ up against Felipe Lobo at One Fight Night 19. It's going to be a belter February 17th if you're in Asia, February 16th if you're in the US in the Eastern Standard Time Zone. Uh, this one is uh, going to be a banger. It always is uh, when we see you inside the ring. Everyone's got their own opinion yeah. about who your opponent should be, right? Um, why Felipe Lobo? Uh, why do you like this fight? Uh, do you know what? It's it's not up to me who they uh, who I fight. You know, I just uh, get offered the fights and I just take them. Um, I've always wanted to fight Felipe Lobo. You know, it's a great fight for me. Uh, we've got a little bit of animosity, you know, a little bit of bad blood, and uh, it just ex it's more exciting for the fans. You know, when we get in there and we put um we put uh our fight together where's the uh, animosity coming from uh i'm not too sure you know there's always back there's back and forth between me and him um he's always called me out i've always called him out and uh now's the time you know no more talking uh we let our fist do the talking february 17th it went pretty well for you against andrage now another brazilian another tiger muay thai guy uh does that yeah. intrigue you uh, yeah, you know, it makes it a little bit more sweet and I can beat uh, both training partners. Um, yeah, I'm just excited. I'm, I'm very excited to uh, to beat both of them. So Lobo says that he's he's got something different, he, as in you've never faced a test like him before and that he's able to show different elements of the game. What do you make of that? Um, I believe uh, he's got something that I've, I've seen before, you know, I've... Uh, I've seen all the styles. I've been there with the best in the world. Nothing phases me. Uh, as soon as I get in there, I can adapt to anything. So um, I'm looking forward to see what he brings. If he thinks he's he's going to bring something that I've never seen, then good on him. Um, but yeah, once I hit him, I feel like he's going to uh, he's going to wish he wasn't in there with me. How's this one going to end then? Uh, what do you what do you sense? Um, I'm definitely going for the stoppage, like always. Uh, I feel like round round two, round three, up up the heat every round, and uh, just see how he copes with it, you know. And um, yeah, just see how he copes. What are you feeling? You know, the elbows, the knees. What's feeling particularly sharp at the moment? Uh, I'm a sharp blade at the moment. Everything's sharp. Everything's sharp, and it's only gonna get sharper. We've got a month left. Um, I'm coming in here to throw everything at him. You know, all the animosity, everything around it. I've got to go in there and put a statement, put on a statement. So, yeah, expect fireworks. What is your favourite way to knock someone out? Uh, Out cold. That's my favourite way. <laughs> um, Yeah, just just laying them out on the canvas, really. It's always the best option. <laughs> you don't have a favourite shot? I'd say the downward elbow is one of my favourite shots I like to use. I also like I like to set up my um my downward elbow as well. So yeah, I'll say the downward elbow. Great, so good Spike highlight. Elbow. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let's talk about Andraj then. Um, I know that you said you're next in line. I think that shows the confidence that you're you're going to dispatch Lobo, right? Uh, when would you like yeah. that to happen, and why is it that you should get in there next? Do you think? I mean, we've been going back and forth on a direct message on Instagram. Uh, we've been going back and forth. It's quite interesting. He's telling me I've got no power and I'm just laughing it off. Um, I feel like I gave him the shot at the kickboxing belt. Well, I didn't give him the shot. I said to him, if you win the kickboxing belt, then you can get a shot at my tie boxing belt. And um, it should be the same, really. You know, if if when I, beat him, when I did beat him for the kickboxing belt, he should give me a shot at the MMA belt. I feel like um, I can give him, I can give him a great fight in MMA. Um, yeah, I think I could be the one that, that takes his MMA belt for sure. Do you think this, despite the idea that he should essentially honour what was uh, kind of agreed between you guys, you know, he's beaten Lineker, he's beaten Quan Wan Il. Do you think it's just the most interesting or that you've got the strongest claim because of maybe uh, the other guy's claims? Uh, yeah, is yours the strongest claim? I mean, I feel like he dominated. He's dominated that division. There's no one really there for him. Obviously, there's rematches there. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, I've beat him once, and uh, I can beat him again. I feel like he's he's his speciality in MMA is 
stand up and I've already uh taken him out in stand up. So imagine with four ounce gloves and a, a little bit of takedown defense. Who knows? Who knows what could happen? But give me the shot and I won't disappoint. Um I'm seeing some people say, Oh, he's just gonna take him down. I've got a feeling that like uh, Andraj, because he's from a kickboxing Muay Thai background, will want to stand with you. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy who's just going to go and wrestle yeah, somebody shoot. when the bell rings. Do, do you get that same sense? Yeah, I mean, he's a fighter, you know, he's got something to prove. And I, I feel like he's a little bit stubborn as well. So especially now I knocked him out on the stand up in kickboxing. I feel like he's going to want to stand up and prove that he can uh, try and outbang me. So, uh if he does, then more fool him. <laughs> but if he tries to take me down, then he's going to get a sprawl or something. <laughs> I, I saw his last interview with one championship. He says uh, he went into the fight injured and that's why he lost. What do you make of that? Uh, I don't believe in excuses. If you're injured, don't take the fight, especially coming up against someone like me. Uh, do I believe him? Not sure. Uh, I had three weeks to fight him. So let's just put it that way. I had a three-week camp to beat him up. It's nice speaking to you this morning because we're fresh off the news that Nico Carrillo has got his number one ranking. That that seemed like that was always going to happen, but it does set things up really nicely between you. In my opinion, it's got all the makings of a classic for British Muay Thai. You know, he's Scottish, you're English. Sky Sports deals just happen, and both of you don't mind promoting a fight. You're both good at promoting yeah, fights. Sure. And I think the preamble is going to be... Just as interesting as the fight itself. So I'm thinking classic. Uh, do you agree? Yeah, no, for sure. You know, he's uh, got to where he, where he is for the hard work he puts in. And uh, you can't doubt him. You know, he's done what he's had to do. He talks a good game. But um, I just feel like coming up against me, I'm different. You know, you can't wait bully me. And what happens when you uh, can't rely on your strength and your, like, your power? What else has he got? I don't think his footwork's good. I think his balance is off. Um yeah, so we'll just we'll just have to see when we come face to face what happens, and uh, I can't wait to shut him up. He is a big bantamweight, eh? Uh, will he be the toughest test for you? Do you think? Yeah, like you said, he's big. I feel like he's a weight bully as well. You know, I feel like he. Uh, will he be the toughest test? Well, I'm not too sure because I've uh, I've stopped most people, but um, yeah, we could say he could be the toughest test, yeah, for sure. Everyone I get in there with, I take it as if they're going to be the toughest test. I train as hard as possible for everyone. And, um, yeah, this belt stand, stand where it belongs, and that's for me. Uh, tick tock, tick tock. You know, I'm coming for you, Jonathan Haggerty. I'm coming for the belt. I I'm liking the promo. That sounds horrendous. That, good... <laughs> that sounds horrendous. What was he thinking when he was saying that? I don't know. Um well, listen, your time's now, mate. Be careful what you wish for. Your time's now. So um, good luck to him. Good luck in training. I hope his hand gets better. And uh, yeah, make sure you're working on blocking kicks. That's what I'm going to say. Do you, uh, what do you make of that fight then? I think it showed tremendous heart for him to come back and then to finish the job. But, it, you know, it was close to being stopped, right? What did you uh, yeah, no, he, assess it? Yeah, he done a... He done what he had to do. It was great, you know. Um, he's a fighter, you know. He done what he had to do. Uh, props to him. Nearly getting stopped. I feel like another ten more seconds and the fight would have been stopped. But obviously, he dug deep. Um, yeah, congratulations to him. He's got his number one spot, and uh, he's obviously got what he wishes for. So, let's go. Any chance that fight happens in the UK, or where would you like to see that fight happen, and when? Where does this fit in your timeline? Because you've got a lot on your plate. Yeah, I'm not fussed where it happens, you know. The way the way he's talking, it can happen uh, in, the, in the outside of the ring. <laughs> um, no, nah, I'm just joking. Yeah, so I'd say back in the UK, O2, Wembley, somewhere like that is ideal. But um, obviously, whatever one championship's got um, got planned, I'm here for it. So, yeah. Where's on your bucket list in terms of locations, not just for Carrillo, but in general, because we've got Japan, we've got Qatar, you know, we've got the US coming up. Where do you really want to fight? Uh, I'd really like to fight in America. I've always wanted to fight in America. Um, that would be great. Also, Japan. Yeah, it's just exciting, exciting times, you know. So, uh, UK mainly. So, uh, Darcy, if you're listening, let's get it done. Let's get it done.
The big one for me, if you go into the US, we'd like to see you fight in the US on multiple occasions because it's always a big card over there. But the Rod Tang trilogy is one that will never go away. Is that the big one for a US card? Yeah, for sure. Rod Tang, you know, there's always talk, even though it's like four or three years down the line. Um, there's always other people asking me, when are you going to fight Rod Tang? When are you going to fight Rod Tang? It will happen, you know. I'd always take the fight if it's offered to me. And um, maybe they're, they're building something massive for him to come up to Bantamweight because I don't think I could make flyweight anymore. <laughs> so uh, when he decides to come up to Bantamweight, I'll give him a welcome in. Talk to me about Akimoto. He's one name that fans seem to, you know, they wanted you to fight him next in some fans. I mean, every fan will think something different, right? But he seems quite deserving. I mean, he's, he hasn't fought for a long time. I think he's coming off a loss, had injury problems, but uh, some people would say he deserves to fight you next. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I, I'd say it out loud. Like, he does deserve to be the number one. He's the number one contender. He deserves to uh, have the next shot at the, the kickboxing world title. And, um, yeah, just know that when, when when we are coming together, I'll be well prepared. Um, I see he's talk he's been talking a lot. Everyone's been talking, you know. I've got a massive target on my back, <laughs> but do you know what? I sit back and I just think to myself, don't retaliate. I've got what everyone wants, uh, so I can just sit here with my feet up, uh, train as hard as possible, and uh, make sure I'm the best version of myself. And um, come home every night and look at them two belts in my cabinet and uh, just be grateful. Well, this becomes exacerbated by the fact that there are two belts, right? And now you want a third one. It's difficult. Are we fortunate in the fact that you are an active guy? You're willing to fight four or five times this year. Is that correct? Yeah, for sure. Like, I'm, I'm willing to uh, take it all. I'm willing to take Andrade's MMA belt for sure. Uh, not sure if he wants to give me the shot. But um, yeah, I'm willing to t uh, fight four times, four, four or five times this year. I'm looking to stay active. This year is going to be great. 2024, there's some great contenders in the uh the bantamweight division now. So um, I'm excited. I'm excited for new opposition and new knockouts. We've got a belter in Japan, you know, Takeru Superlek. How excited are you for that one? How does that one go? Can you break it down for us? Yeah, that's going to be a great fight. I'm looking forward to Takeru's uh, debut. I've been watching him for a while now. Um, One of the best kickboxers in the world. Coming up against Superlek, I feel like he just goes down to who's well prepared, you know, because Superlek stepped in at short notice. I know he was meant to fight Mahmoudi, but um, is he prepared for the style of Tekru? Is he um, is he well prepared? Is he, is he been training hard? That's all it comes down to. Who's got the biggest biggest engine? And um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go with Superlek, you know, if he can keep him at distance with his kicks. I'm gonna go with Superlek, but we'll see. That would be historic for him to come into Japan and take out the Japanese star and arguably the face of kickboxing. Uh, for sure. Does that ever play a role? You know, it's not not quite like in football, is it? When we've got the home team, the away team. When the crowd's all on your back, does it, does it really matter? Do you tune it out? Have you been in those kind of situations before? Uh, it, the fa it, does, it doesn't matter who's cheering for you or not. You know, you're the one that's getting in that ring. I can just guarantee every time I leave that ring, his fans will, will be my fans when I'm walking out. So that's what I say. As a Brit, I must say I'm very excited by, you know, with people like you and your peak, Liam Nolan, you know, Liam Harrison still competing, that um, you know, your brother coming up, there's Carrillo, yeah. I mentioned him already, there's just loads of exciting fighters and it seems to be a bit of a golden age and some people might suggest that, that you guys are just made for this format, the four ounce gloves, What's happening here in British Muay Thai? I mean, I've say for the past few years now, like UK levels gone so high through the roof. Um, I'd say people like myself, like influencing the younger generation coming up, wanting to take their shin guards off and just get straight to it. No messing about. Um, yeah, I don't know what they're putting in the water, but we're breeding animals. You know, there's a few good kids coming up. There's obviously the likes of, like you just mentioned, Nolan, Harrison. Um, yeah, we're doing great, and uh, we're here to take over, for sure. I see that there's a, is there three, three top five ranks in the bantamweight now in the UK, so that's great to see. Um, just hope more come through, and I hope uh, a lot more UK fighters get signed. What is going on with Liam Harrison and yourself? 
how many times have you guys crossed paths over the years? It's kind of a small industry, right? You must have met over the years. What is the beef there? I, I don't think the talk of you guys fighting is really there anymore, but it was for a while. Yeah. Things have gone away. What's going on? I mean, he's obsessed, you know, for the last few months now. He hasn't stopped saying my name. Uh, but like I said, I've got every, I've got what everyone wants. So uh, maybe that's the reason why, you know, he keeps mentioning that Nico's going to beat me, this and that. He's passing people on to fight me. He's got such a big mouth. Why don't he come and step in the ring and fight me? He's got such a big opinion. Come and do it yourself. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, no, I think the fight's finished now. Like, he, he wants to fight sex and it's going to be a great fight. Uh, they both deserve it, both legends. So, uh, made a best man win there, and uh, that'll be a great fight. It'll be fireworks. So, yeah, keep my name out of your mouth, mate, if you're not going to fight me. What's the interactions been? I assume you guys have met multiple times over the years. British Muay Thai, Muay Thai is not that big of a scene, I mean, in terms of like the people who, who make it, and especially at the top level. What's it been like when you've been interacted? Surely that, was, that it began as massive respect between you guys. Yeah, there, there always will be respect, you know. He's a legend in the sport. Uh, we had no animosity at all until there was talks of us fighting. And when I get when I get part, um, matched up with someone, I act as if I don't like them, you know. I act as if they got, they want to take what I've got, so I'm going to be stubborn as stubborn as hell. And um, I'm tunnel vision on him, you know. I'm scanning his body. I know what I can do. I know what I'm going to do. And I just don't like you at that point. After the fight, we could be cool. But I think that's where it's built from, you know, the talks of us fighting and now the talks of him trying to pass pass it on to other people saying they're going to beat me, they want me to get beat. He's just waiting for my downfall, but that's great, you know, because I've still got whatever I want and I'm going to keep it. <laughs> Do you empathise with his the way that he's painting this sex sand fight because, it, you know, two absolute warriors uh, towards the end of their careers. It could be something really beautiful. Like, can you see why he would want to sign off on that note with a war? Yeah, for sure. You know, if, if it's a fight that you've always wanted and then uh, if you feel like it's your last fight, why not try and, try and push towards that fight? You know, you, they both deserve it. They've both done what they've had to do. Um, yeah, I think Sex Sam picks him apart, if I'm honest, and uh, melts him down drags him to deep waters so good luck on them both does the sex and fight i'm sure that you would back yourself to beat sex and but fighting him it doesn't matter who you are can take years off your life is that something that you want a, a war with sex and down the road or, or sometime soon because he seems to be in the picture um, of eight fight win streak yeah he's done he's done great you know but uh it, me and sex and it won't be a war you know i'll make sure it's not a war he uh he can't do what he does to opponents to me, you know, I won't fall for any of that. My footwork will confuse him. Um, yeah, it'll be a great fight, but I see myself on top for sure. And uh, what about your brother? It's exciting that he's going to make his debut very soon. What can we expect from him in terms of who he is as a person and who he is as a fighter? You know, I'm so happy he's got what he's wanted. You know, for his whole whole life, he's grown up watch, watching me get to the top. And uh, now is his time, you know. I'm very grateful that I've been able to do what I've had to do to uh, motivate him and push him to to see what he wants to do. And now he's actually flying out as we speak. So uh, he's been here for a few weeks in Thailand. I've been watching him train. He's been training his, uh, his ass off. You know, he deserves this. I'm excited for the fans to see what he brings. And um, yeah, I'm just very excited for him you know, to get to the top, both both brothers, you know, the, the phone will be look very well looked after, let's put it that way. What's he bringing as a fighter in terms of technique? Like, what, what do you really rate about him as a fighter? Uh, he's, bring, he, he's a mini-me, you know, he brings everything I bring, you know, maybe even more, you never know, when he grows old, he's going to be a lot better than me, I hope he is. Um, yeah, he's, he's hard work and determination, he's very dedicated. Very dedicated. I've watched him train all his life. I've also trained him. So uh, I know what he brings and I'm excited to uh, unleash him. I'm excited to him, for him to be unleashed. There's another important matchup for the top five. Semipet has uh, got the rematch with Mohamed Yunus Rabba. Really controversial knockout, which is why they're running it back, I guess. What do you make yeah. of that one? I mean, for sure, it was definitely a foul. One million percent, it was a foul. 
I think I remember commenting on the post saying that's definitely a foul. Um, great fight. Uh, I didn't watch the fight at the, at the time. I just watched the highlights back. But um, I'll definitely be tuning into this one. And um, I'm excited to watch it. Good luck to both men. We're going to do the perfect striker. So out of all one championship roster, who are you going with in terms of punches? So in terms of punches, I'm going to go uh, power-wise. Uh, I like John Lineker's power with his punches. And to stone. Uh, elbows? Elbows. I'm going to go myself. Can Knee? I pick myself? You can. Yeah, you can, yeah. Sure. Knees? Me, 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 me. <laughs> uh, knees. Knees. I'm going to go... Um, I like... Uh, uh, Sex hands knees when he's in the, in the clinch and he's just drowning his opponents. I like the way he throws his knees out. I also like Montai's knees. So yeah, kicks, kicks. I'm gonna go with Superlek. Who's got the best chin? Rotang. Iron Man. And uh, who's Iron got the best Man. best microphone skills? Best mic skills, I'm gonna go with monkey. Is it the monkey god? The monkey god. I feel like you give him a mic and he can. Uh, he'll be there all night. I feel <laughs> like Demetrius Johnson's also great as well. You know, on the mic. Yeah, man, th those guys know what they're doing. Uh, we'll wrap sure. up. With, I've got a little quick fire for you. So, um, duh, duh, duh. what is the best combat sports film ever? That sports film. Do you know what? I'm not really into them, if I'm honest, because I, I I'm a I'm a real life fighter. When I watch combat sports films, I feel like when it's fake, I just can't get into it. You not know? even Rocky. Uh, Rocky, yeah. But obviously, we have to go with Rocky for sure. Yeah, Rocky. What's your favorite drink? Favorite drink. Um, I like. I like a sprite. What's your? Do you watch TV? Best TV show at the moment. Best TV show at the moment. I'm going to get a lot of stick for this, but I do like a little bit of Love Island. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the... I'm going to go with that one. What's the best city to fight in? Best city to fight in. It's got to be the UK, right? I'd I can't wait. London. Sure, London, for sure. O2, London. Favourite musician or band? Favourite musician or band? I, I like the script. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, I don't, I don't know, like one of their tunes. Uh, who's uh, the nicest person in combat sports? Nicest person in combat sports, it's got to be Mikey the Grappler. Mikey Musumex, <laughs> yeah, that's the guy. That's the guy. Have you rolled with him before? I haven't. No, I'm not planning to neither. I'm planning to keep my limbs. <laughs> Did you see that Superbon said that he only needs? Three to six months of takedown defense, and he's ready to fight MMA. Really, I feel like he's copying me there. But I, I only, I only need, a, I only need. What do I need? Just give me eight weeks. I said eight weeks. Give me eight weeks. Wow. And I'll be good to go. If you could be... I'm coming for you. <laughs> if you could be any uh, comic book character or superhero, who would it be? Superman. Who's the most famous person in your phone? Uh, Simon Cowell. <laughs> How have you got Simon Cowell's number? I'm joking. I'm, jo I'm only joking. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I'll have to scroll through. I've got I've got quite a few, but I'm not too sure. I can't put, I can't pin it. Who's what's the most important item in your fridge and why? Most important item in my fridge is water. You know, everyone needs a bit of water. I'm going to be boring, but yeah, I love the water. <laughs> Underrated. Can't live without it. So. Who would yeah. be the best the best wingman in one championship? Freddie Haggerty. Yeah, fair play. And uh, who would be the most fun on a night out? Most fun on a night out? Uh, I'm not too sure, you know? I haven't really connected with any of the, any of the MMA uh, one championship fighters like that. But um, Demetrius Johnson, let's go. Who would yeah, <laughs> yeah, two two absolute legends of the game. Who would you uh want by your side in a street fight? Ah, uh, Roman Cricular. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Good call. I say yeah. It speaks yeah. my mate. He, he he can deal with it. Yeah, right. And uh, <laughs> what do you want to be remembered for? Uh, knocking out Nico Carrillo. <laughs>
Quality. Fair play, man. It's been uh, it's been good to Thank see you. Thank you very much, brother. Good luck. Thank you. Catching up. Cheers. Pick a move.